Hey everyone, it's everything new here. Uh, now, Windows XP has had uh, its app support deprived a long time because it's been out of support since April 8th, 2014. There aren't really many apps for it anymore today. But that's exactly what I'm going to look at today. I'm going to look at applications that still support Windows XP. And you'd be surprised because there are quite a few out in the wild that still support Windows XP. Now, um... Uh, so if you want to make Windows Vista app support Windows XP, first we're going to start off with this thing called All Key for Applications. I so initially saw this in a Michael MJD video, but basically what this does is it, um, it, it, it turns, it lets you run Windows Vista applications in Windows XP. So we're just going to install this quickly. And you can see you know, the setup process is pretty simple, but we can, um, to, to not bind us to a product key. And then now it's just going to install. Uh, all key for applications in Windows XP. So basically what this does is it somehow, some way or another lets you run Windows Vista applications in Windows XP and you can see it's actually you know modifying the system to do this. Uh, we can, this is, okay this is a slightly bigger window than the all key one. Mm, by a few pixels, yeah. So this is just going to install and I'm just going to uh, wait for it to install. Yeah, so. And there it go. Uh, so now it says click the finish button to exit. I don't know if you have to restart or not. So I'm going to move on to the applications. Now these are all applications that still support Windows XP. So first we're going to start off with MyPal, uh, which is a browser that's uh, open, for, open source forked from Pale Moon which is itself an open source fork of, my, of uh, Firefox. And what makes this browser notable is that it still supports Windows XP, surprisingly enough. So um, you can actually get modern browsing capabilities on Windows XP. Does this mean you're gonna be able to do banking on Windows XP? Absolutely not. Banking has actually been disabled on this browser uh, to you know prevent people's data from getting out. So here's the welcome to the Myspal Pal setup wizard. So we're just going to click next, standard, and uh, we'll just tell it to not use as our default, because why should we? And then uh, it's done. So you can see it installed pretty fast, and we're just going to open my pal quickly. Uh, it should take a bit of a while to initially open my pal, but um, eventually it'll pop up. You can see our CPU is you know, pegged at 100%. It's just one core I'm using right now, because Windows XP is that light. And you can see... We're here on my pal, so if you go to google.ca, sorry if you can hear my keyboard, uh, you can see that we're at google.ca and uh, it's the one, it's the new layout, not the old browser layout. If we went to Internet Explorer here, so iExplore.exe, and went to google.ca, we'd uh, see something like this. Uh, gonna give it a little while. We'd first see this problem with the website security certificate. It's not from the date. The date is completely lined up with the system state right now because I have VMware tools and stuff. But over here, you can kind of see here that um, uh, while these websites do look, you know, uh, similar to each other at a first glance. Oh, I forgot. There's no split screen on this version of Windows. Uh, this one is running the mobile version. So if, for example, I search. Um, I don't know, I'll search trending, why not, uh, no, thank you, you can see that it kind of has this mobile-ish look to it, and, uh, if we search trending here, oops, kind of slow on both, you can see that this is a more modern version of Google, actually optimized for desktop, well, this is just a mobile version, so I'm just going to close out of this quickly, and, Check the HTML5 scores. Oops. Forgot you have to do this. Jeez. We're gonna go to HTML5. Test. Test. Somehow it remembers to go there. Uh, and we can see here is that uh, if it loads for a few seconds, 428 out of 555 points. Now this is not spectacular. This is about 100 points less than Google Chrome. But this is enough to get by, right? It will still be enough. To actually, um, to actually use MyPal, I mean, to actually use modern browsing on Windows XP, even knows we're using Windows XP lol. And uh, yeah, so there's a modern browser for Windows XP. 
and the next thing well I'm just gonna briefly talk about this because I actually don't want to install it because it's gonna have to download stuff from the internet and then install all its definitions and stuff and basically this is an antivirus called panda free AV which allows you to um, which basically is an antivirus so it uh, protects your system from you know uh, viruses and that's really important on Windows XP because a lot of exploiters can take advantage of the fact that you're using an older operating system so panda free is probably the best uh, software you can use for virus protection now um, moving on to office to an office suite this is open office <coughs> the latest version in fact uh, and if we can wait for it to load here quickly so you can see open office 4.1.9 setup so um, yeah, this is the latest version of OpenOffice, and uh, it'll say so it will guide you through the installation of OpenOffice. So it's a very lightweight application, so you don't have to worry about that. And we'll just wait for this to install. And when it's done, it'll say, Welcome to the installation wizard again. This will let you activate it. Sorry about my chair, by the way. It's just in the background right now. And um, it'll say, customize your thing. And I'll just say, I want typical. And create a link on the desktop. So now we're just going to sit back and watch this install. 2,000 years later. So it seems like we might actually be done with installing OpenOffice as the thing has appeared on the desktop. And here goes. I think it's going to finish right now. Yep, there we go. So you can see OpenOffice is done. We'll just delete the installation files quickly because they are kind of a bit heavy ish, sort of. And uh, when we double click OpenOffice, it'll guide us towards um, opening the thing like this. I think it needs like some, a reboot to do something or something. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. So it says, uh, this, so this is basically a launcher, and I find this a really simplistic launcher to be really helpful. It lets you add in plugins, um, templates, and stuff. So we're just going to open a text document quickly, just to show. And this is kind of what it looks like. It looks a bit boring-ish, but it also looks uh, uh, really nice with its little touch of 3D. I think this works really well as a... Um, as a document writer for Windows XP, again, you can write documents, create spreadsheets, and uh, a slideshows using OpenOffice. So I think it's really uh, good. And this this is the latest version. The program 4.1.9 supports Windows XP. So the latest version of this should definitely run on anything on a uh, Windows XP computer, especially because it's a very lightweight application. You can see here. We're barely using any CPU at all after the installer, and we can just go hello. I am typing, and you can see after a brief spike, it's barely using anything at all, which is actually pretty surprising. So, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem writing documents on this anymore. Uh, and OpenOffice, of course, is supported, so no security risks there. Now, I'm also going to be taking a look at um, a picture viewer called iView or uh, Irfan View, and um, uh, and this is going to be the latest version, and we're just going to install it. So we're just going to say try to change it for all users and stuff, and we'll just let it use the a folder, a dedicated folder, and you can see it's installed now. So it has actually a 32 logo. I don't know if that's 64 for running 64-bit version of this application. But, you know, so it's trying to open the browser right now, which was a mistake. Uh, and you can see this is a very, very basic photo viewer. Oh my god, can it stop trying to load the website, jeez. Okay, so we're just going to go and open a basic folder, I think. I mean, a basic picture. There should be some sample pictures in XP. Yep, I knew it. I'm so right. So unlike... Uh, Unlike Windows XP's default picture viewer, this lets you manipulate images at least a bit. So you can see we'll open Blue Hills here, and um, I, and it'll let us, you know, copy paste it. I guess I guess you can do that here if you right click it, and there is a bit of editing as well. But that opens Paint, and a pretty outdated version of Paint as well. So this actually lets you view photos a bit and stuff. I guess it works all right and lets you save as print 
and do a slideshow as well so this is pretty darn cool and you can see it's got quite a few options I'm not gonna get into every single one but you know there's also blur here so we'll just let we'll just blur this part sure what the oh I guess blur didn't work well I don't have time to show you how in earth and view really works so um, next we have uh, next we have VLC which is so if you remember Windows XP it doesn't have the codecs to play mp4 video so um, VLC basically uh, uh, has all those plugins built in it has um, x264 plugins x265 h.264 .265 basically all of them plugins that you need to watch a video on Windows XP and um, and so this is the latest version of VLC that runs on Windows XP, by the way. And this is a pretty popular application. I mean, I have this installed on my main system. So you should have no problem installing this on Windows XP. I'll just let it sit here and install. And you can see we are done. So we're just going to click run VLC player. And this basically works like actual VLC. And this is... Um, the latest version of VLC so you should have no problem running any sort of video I can't get any videos to copy to Windows XP unfortunately but I think there is a standard video so I think I'm gonna try and find it a sample video uh, no can't find it alright well looks like there's no video in Windows XP so uh, but you can take my word that VLC will work on XP and let you play H.265 videos and stuff so next we've got um, uh, the last couple of programs. There's 7-Zip and this... So uh, this is the latest version of 7-Zip. Seven, seven this is the one that was made in 2019. If we go into the, um, to the thing and then we check the version. Uh, see it says 2018 Igor Pavlov. This is the latest version you can download off their website. So it's just basic extractor works pretty basically so if you go over here and you can see all of our programs are piling into the start menu now uh, you can see that this just works I guess you could say and um, you can find it oh it says hmm oh so I see my video there okay so I think we'll just open that quickly so just to show that VLC works and this is my most popular video so um yeah everything I sound so embarrassingly quiet. It's just so such a joke. I mean, I'm still pretty quiet nowadays, but at least I got a better microphone, so uh, you guys can hear me better. So, but this is like absolutely embarrassing. <laughs> but you can see this is um, H.264 video playing through Windows XP. So we're just gonna quit this because this is maxing out our thing. And you can see that. Um, so 7-Zip definitely works. And the last. Uh, program that I want to show is called Pencil 2D. This, um, the latest version runs on Windows XP, but you have to get a separate download for the Windows XP version. But this is the latest because 0.6.6 is the latest version on Windows uh, 7 and up. So you can see here, this is just a basic little animator that you can use for animating things. For example, I can make this stick figure, I guess you could say, and then uh, create a new frame, uh, add frame, and then you can just do the same thing only okay so looks like I'm kind of having a bit of fun here but basically this is a basic very basic animator but it works so yeah I think we'll discard so yeah that's all the applications that you can install on Windows XP and these are all modern applications all five of these are modern up-to-date applications so um uh, as time goes on though I doubt that the developers are gonna keep supporting Windows XP so I wouldn't suggest sticking around just for these apps, so I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, you guys know what to do, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!